<laughs> yeah, I think I'm subscribed too. I think every day my son tells me how many more subscribers he has on his YouTube channel. Oh, that's awesome. What's his what's his what's his I don't know. Channel? I'm not sure. It's all about Minecraft, so. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what, this whole class. I'm not even sure. I should probably subscribe to him, right? Yes. Like, yes. It's like, Mom, I just got 20 million Only if he subscribes to me. He will be so happy. I will subscribe. Yeah, he's been pretty excited. He'd be like, Mom, five people. <laughs> He'll be like, that's how I'll do it too. I'll find out. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So, guys, um, absolute value. You did learn in algebra. We didn't probably deal with it, I don't think, at all in geometry, maybe a very little bit. Um, but the idea of absolute value is that it's the uh, distance between two points. And distance, you don't typically call that negative. So if I run out five miles and back five miles, the one's not a negative distance. It doesn't like cancel it out and make it zero. That would be really disappointing. So, you know, regardless if I run north or south, my distance is still positive. So same idea with absolute value here is that absolute value basically changes the answer to be positive when we're working with absolute value symbols. So the straight up and down lines are absolute value lines. I don't know why they didn't come up with something a little more creative because sometimes they kind of look like ones depending on your handwriting. But um, we're gonna substitute these values in. So five minus seven. Five is my A, and the absolute value of that minus the absolute value of C, which is negative three. So I needed absolute value symbols are also grouping symbols, so kind of like parentheses, so I have to do what's inside the absolute value. So I'm going to do five minus seven. What is that? Two. Right now. Negative two. Negative two right now. I did not say anything. I'm scared. Here. Oh, no, that was Kinsey. Jeez. <laughs> I'll keep on. Not saying anything about Garrett's voice right now. It sounded like. No. You're out. Put your nose, your mask over your nose before you leave. Okay. So, <laughs> so, absolute value of negative two is how much? What would be if you ran negative two miles? Two. You ran, you ran two miles. Yeah. So, Tara, if you go the wrong direction, it's not negative today when you're running. Absolute value of negative three? Three. three. What's it telling me to do with these two? Subtract. So the fact that we get two minus three, we get a negative answer, is perfectly fine. This is a negative one. The fact that it's not only a positive answer isn't wrong. Like, so don't think you did something wrong. Absolute value answer isn't always positive if the absolute value isn't the only thing in that problem. So just kind of watching out for that kind of thing. So evaluating um, makes us start to think about this, this idea. So if you guys want to try this one, if you haven't already, I'll let you guys do that real quick, and I'm going to probably do that. We're all um... I'm going to hide the door for a second. So we can see Kinsey's braid. What? It's not a braid. Oh. Yeah, it's in these spaced out. Spaced out. <laughs> no, that's so weird. Okay. <laughs> 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 Alright, so we're going to do that. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah, I don't know why my picture is so like, zoomed out. It has like my shoulders and everybody else is like here. Like from last year, like this. Like the camera was already social distancing. Yeah, I guess the, so. The camera knew from last year. Yeah, yeah. It they predicted, predicted the future. That's what I was about to say. Are you still like? I'm still having a hard time watching TV shows. Um, I'm oh, sorry. A times C we're doing here, so five times negative. A lot of times in TV shows, I'm like, why are they all touching and hugging? And, like, it seems weird. Like, still, or like, <laughs> when was this recorded? <laughs> So we do five times a negative three, which is a negative fifteen. But now we have to take the absolute value of that, which is going to be positive fifteen. But then you still multiply it by a negative two. So you're doing the absolute value. You're not like distributing into the absolute value. 
So absolute value is like Hermian symbols in a lot of ways, but there are things about it that make it slightly different. So you got to be careful there. So negative 30 is our final answer there. So that's evaluating. What we're working with today is solving mostly. Um, there will be some evaluating, I believe, but also solving. Yeah, there's some evaluating. But, um, so for solving our absolute value, we have to think about what type of answers we could end up with. So we're solving absolute value equations today. And just so you guys know, this chapter, we're already about halfway through it. So we're kind of cruising here. Um, so next week, Thursday, is probably going to be when we test. So, um, so it's on the calendar up there in a couple of spots. So um, the probably the 10th is the plan. I usually like start that way and then if I have to move back, mm -hmm. that'd be the earliest it could be. But I would assume that's when we'll test. So the 10th. So we're gonna solve absolute value equation. So this is like the first scenario. So this is basically like case one. So type one for the case. So when the absolute value equals a positive, so if I have the absolute value of x equals 10, what values for x make sense? So if I say the absolute value of x equals 10. Negative 10. Ne negative 10 could work. Positive. Yes. Or positive 10. Do you guys agree? Yes. Negative 10 absolute value is going to be 10. Positive 10 absolute value is 10. So we get two solutions. So this has two possible answers for our x value. So when we solve absolute value, we might get up to two solutions. But either one would be right. What's that? But either of them would be right. So we want them both. So just like when it says choose all that apply, we want to choose all. So we want both parts. So that's, that's our first type of problem. This is probably the most frequent one we'll see. Are we okay with that? Yeah. It's up to two solutions. There's a couple other special cases, though. What happens if the absolute value equals a negative? What value of x would give me this outcome? Negative 10. No. What do you guys think? 10. Is there any? Yeah, you'd have to change it. You'd have to like do something to change it. Is there any value of x right now that I can put in there that would make the answer be negative 10? No. So what do we say when we can't find any answer that works? No solution. There could be no solution for a problem like this. It's not possible to take the absolute value and have the answer come out as a, a negative. So I cannot take the absolute value of a number without changing something outside that absolute value and make that work. So that's just not possible. So when you see that happen, when the absolute value equals a negative, you can say no solution. But it has to be almost exactly like this, where there's just an absolute value on one side and a negative on the other. And then finally, the third type of problem. So this was type two, and this is type three. These are less common than that first type. How about the absolute value equaling zero? When can the absolute value equal zero? zero. So x would have to be zero. Can x be positive or negative zero? No. So you only get one answer in this case. So there's only one solution. So this is another unique type. So these two will not come up as often as the one above. So we'll do a few examples of kind of straightforward problems, then we'll take a little break. Um, and then we will do some more complicated ones after our break, um, which we'll go outside for. Yay. So, it's very nice outside. What's that? He really wanted to make up. He was in the protest last summer. Yeah. Okay. So, I put this little heart on the page. You can't move yours around, but I can move my little heart around. Oh. So, what I want to do is talk about how to solve absolute value equations. So my first step is I want to isolate the absolute value. And in this case, it's already done for us. 
The back side is when we're going to have to worry about doing that. So we want to isolate the absolute value first. So we're going to isolate the absolute value. So absolute value equals, absolute value equals, absolute value equals. They're all isolated here. These are all examples of where it's isolated. If you want to see when it's not isolated, that's what the back side looks like. So we'll do that after break. Now, I want to figure out what values work for x. And some of you guys are like, well, I can already tell. 4 works for x. Just because I can look at that problem and solve it in my head. But there's more than one answer. Because the absolute value equals a positive. So what this little part is meant to do is to help you kind of visualize something going on here. So I'm trying to cover that up so you don't know what's under there. So I'm trying to cover that up and make you guys think about what could be underneath the heart. If I'm taking the absolute value of heart and it equals 7, what values could be underneath the heart? Negative 7 or positive 7. So underneath this heart, I could either have positive 7 or negative 7. So what I'm going to do is set up two equations say, saying it could equal 7 or negative 7. Now, underneath the heart, there's actually something that's written there. So we need to move the heart now and actually write 2x minus 1 could equal 7, but 2x minus 1 could also equal negative 7. Both answers will work. Both answers will give us an outcome that will work in this problem. And it's not necessarily just 4 and negative 4. It's going to be 4, because, like I said, that's one we can kind of do in our head. So there's our answer of 4. And again, that's probably the one you would have came up with if you had absolutely no idea how to do what we were doing today. But the other answer is the one you might have forgotten about or not realized. Negative 6 here, and then divide by 2. So x ends up being a negative 3 as well. So if I put that value into this expression, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, minus 1 is a negative 7, absolute value of negative 7 is 7. So we get that second answer from setting up two equations. So we're going to set up a positive version and a negative version. And notice we didn't change anything that was underneath the heart. We just said either it could be 7 or negative 7. We didn't worry about anything underneath the heart until we started solving. Same idea down here. So if I cover up what's in the absolute value, we know it could equal, either equal what or what? 2 or negative 2. Two or negative two. So right now, I don't even care what's underneath the heart. I'm going to say it equals 2 or it equals a negative 2. So now I'm going to move the heart. So it's 5 minus 3x. So I don't change anything about what's inside the absolute value quite yet. That makes sense of so setting up those two equations. And this is definitely something in Algebra 1 you probably forgot that we did. We did this at one point in Algebra 1. But that second answer is always forgotten about. The middle child of the group. So I move that 5 over. So get x is 1. Again, probably the answer you would have came up with had you not known how to do today's lesson at all. This one's not going to be a nice number, and that's okay, because not everything in Algebra 2 becomes a nice number. We're done. So negative, negative. So 
we have positive seven thirds. Or I could also call that 2.3 repeating is fine as well. And then finally, this last one, we're going to set up these two equations. And then, like I said, we'll go outside and, and work through some of these other ones. Um, or we'll work through um, more practice like these. So set up our two equations, so 6 and negative 6. What's our first step on this kind, you guys? We're going to multiply by 3 to begin with. So this will cancel 18 there. X is 13. Then this one times by three. Move that five over. This one's going to be a negative 23. So again, that second answer would be really easy to completely forget about, and it's a little bit tougher to find. So um, I'm going to pause the video for right now. If we so. <laughs> we'll be back after the break. After the break.